This thumb drive contains one of the most devastating ransomwares in the history of computing, which is the WannaCry ransomware. And not only that, the WannaCry in here has been modified so that no modern antivirus can actually detect it being there. So what am I going to do with it? The only same thing here is to plug this into this laptop and destroy all its data. And for a good reason. That good reason is that this video is sponsored by x SSDs. They wanted me to show you guys a brand new SSD product that they have. So what is this product? Well, this SSD that they have has built-in cybersecurity features built straight into the hardware with dedicated sensors, controllers, chips just to make your data more secure with these special features. It's designed to add another layer of security to your whole stack of different cyber securities from your two-factor authentication to your yeah, antivirus and it basically is designed to make you feel a little safer when your data is in your PC at night. Now, in the world of cyber security, there's a lot of snake oil, a lot of hot air, a lot of BS. So does this actually work? Well, Apart from the test that I'm going to show you where we actually try to destroy the drives in this laptop, let me just put it this way. Why else would Lenovo, of all people, you know, a massive laptop conglomerate, collaborate with x SSDs to put their x SSDs in a special line of laptops coming down the road? Because Lenovo came down one day with hard drives and thumb drives full of viruses and ransomware, so all the cybersecurity attacks they could get together and tried to break the x SSDs. Not a single attack succeeded, and within two weeks, Lenovo were getting ready to start designing and collaborating with this brand. So, if that doesn't tell you that this brand is not just fluff and actually has substance, I don't know what else will convince you. Either way though, the details about how this drive works are pretty complicated, so I'm gonna leave it to the end when I've got a proper script and I'm filming at home. But before that, we're gonna do the fun stuff, which is, um, Playing with a bunch of ransomware and trying to destroy these laptops. Sometimes successful, sometimes not so successful. So right here, we're going to do our first test. And right here, we have a normal Lenovo laptop. We've got this test file here. And inside this test file, we have WannaCry, which we have yet to run. Now, we've programmed it and they've modified the WannaCry ransomware, which technically is supposed to destroy all your data on your drive, but they've modified it so it only targets this particular folder. And they've also modified it so that modern antiviruses cannot detect it because it's been modified to, to take advantage of a zero-day exploit. So we're going to look inside this test file, which is the target of this attack. And as you can see, it's full of Word documents, which are all accessible. I'm going to open up some of them right now so that you can see that it's actual files. Like You can actually view these files. You can actually basically Look at it, it's all your data, it's, it's all actual Word documents. Obviously, this isn't very important information, this is just for a test file uh, and there are backups to it. But it's just to show you that it will actually encrypt your data. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit this little wannacry.python uh, file and we're going to run wannacry. Yes, we are going to run wannacry. This is what you've been waiting for and we're going to hit it and it's going to target this file and then destroy and encrypt all its data and then just like throw the key away. So it's running and we will just wait patiently for it to murder anyone say that. Ah, there you go. That's that's the sound. That's the traumatic sound. And there you go. Wanna cry ransomware attack. So back in 2017 or 2018 when this attack was in full force, what basically happened was this right here uh, appeared on many people, millions of people's PCs. But not only did it appear as a little window, it appeared across the whole screen as the whole computer was basically encrypted by this ransomware. And what this ransomware did was it would encrypt all your data on your PC and it will then lock it up with a key and you would have to pay them Bitcoin to give you the key back. But usually, even after you pay these hackers Bitcoin, they still wouldn't give you the key because if they did, it would be much easier to track them down. So they generally just threw the key away and said, haha, sucks to suck, that's all your data gone. And this right here, this particular ransomware attack, basically encrypted all your files, so they're basically locked, as you can see right here. So if you look closely here, all these files have a dot crypt after them and it's impossible to access them unless you have the decryption password because they're now encrypted. Imagine if that was your sensitive data, like your sensitive company info or that was your private photos of your loved ones, you know, you're going to lose them forever because of an attack like this. So cybersecurity is important and as you can tell on a normal laptop, it's very easy to activate, it's very easy to use, it's very easy to exploit. Even though it has antivirus on it, uh, it was not very effective because a simple modification to the ransomware was able to take down the whole system if we wanted to. So that's that. Let's move on to this laptop right here. So this right here is also a Lenovo laptop, but instead of 
well, a normal Lenovo laptop. This is a ThinkPad Carbon X1, which will be the basis for the X5 collaboration laptop that they are working on, which is coming in a few months. So th this right here has been modified with one thing, and really just one thing, and that is they've installed one of these. This right here. This is the X5 SSD that we're talking about. The, the main thing of today's video has been installed. The SSD in here is now an X5 SSD. So with this SSD, what you need to do is you need to install its software app so you can control its features and make sure and check the status of everything and set everything up. So apart from that, that's all you need to do. You really need to update it. You really need to tweak it. You really need to touch it. Once you turn it on and set it up, you forget it. It's a fire and forget system, which is good especially since systems that need constant updating and constant maintenance are likely to have a lot of human error. So, we've got this running and we've got all our protection features turned on. What we're going to do next is we're going to run WannaCry in the same exact test files. The same exact WannaCry is being put on here as well on this screen. But because it is protected, nothing is going to happen. So let's, let's, hit, let's hit play and we're running the same thing. The same command prompt is running and instantly, X5 shuts down the PC. We signed out, we're locked out, and the drive locks down instantly. So the moment you run the WannaCry, what actually happens is it turns off, it shuts you out, it locks you out, and you will not be able to use it until you unlock it with your two-factor authentication, which we're going to show you right now. All right, so right now, it, because we're locked out, we're going to need to use two-factor authentication to basically unlock the SSD that's inside this laptop. And what is interesting about this SSD is that it has Bluetooth. So it will then be able to connect to your phone via the X5 app, which we have running right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect through Bluetooth and basically unlock the drivers in here through this second factor authentication. So how do you secure the drive in here is by using the X5 app and you can secure it through both a password on the app itself and also through a Microsoft or a Google Authenticator so that there's two layers of security even in your Authenticator for the drive itself. So it's, it's very secure that way. So you have the app now and uh, can you show me how it's done? So all you need to do is you need to pair with your SSD because there you go, your SSD has Bluetooth and you'll be unlocking it through your phone, your phone will be your key. And we're going to unlock the SSD drive. So afterwards, you need to log in with your password and then you need to unlock it with the OTP that you get on your Google Authenticator. There you go. You get that Google Authenticator OTP, you type it in for your second factor and then boom, does it say? SSD unlocked. So it tells you it's unlocked and then you can finally boot up onto the laptop because now it's unlocked. There you go! We're finally unlocked after the attack which locked us out initially. Now it might seem like a lot of hassle but this is cyber security and the hassle well, means that you are protected. So we're going to load up the X5 software now and because it saves a history of previous attacks onto its firmware, you can actually see what actually happened. So can you log in the password? So we're in the, we're in the app and as you can see, what just happened. So there was a ransomware attack at this time, which is when I hit the WannaCry software and I activated it. And then there was a lock. It was locked because, well, it detected the attack and shut it down, which was not something that the AVG antivirus software managed to do, by the way. And then it unlocked it once we unlocked it with our phone app a couple of minutes later. And it's all saved here. So if there's an attack, you know it, there's a record. And you can't actually delete this record because it's saved directly to the firmware of the drive. It's not saved in the SSD's NAN, it's not saved in the normal storage, it's saved straight inside the firmware so it's a lot harder to delete which is quite cool so you can actually see see what information about this attack actually happened and it detected it so that's very cool now since we're on this app i might as well show you some of the other things that this app can do so you've got a little dashboard where you can see all the different partitions of your drive you can see all the different statuses see check the health of the ssd and you can also configure it so you can turn things on like wipe data if it detects uh, sudden things like sudden detachment, sudden unplugging and things like that. It can also turn on protection from temperature, protection from physical tempering, you know, all these different things that you can turn on and off depending on your concerns and your level of uh, anxiety and things like that. So that's cool. As you can see, there's also an ambient light threshold, which is really, really cool. So what this actually is, is you can adjust like the amount of ambient light it is sensitive to, so it understands when it's like being exposed to actual light when it's not, which is all really cool. And you've got a bunch of other privacy settings 
settings and as well as your authenticator setup. So you can choose between Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator or like a registered email OTP. The good thing about Authenticator is that you don't actually need internet to use it. So even if you don't have internet, you can still unlock your SSD through Google's very secure authenticator even when you're locked out. So that's good. So that is the software. Let's do the next attack which is temperature tempering. So what we just tried to use ransomware to set the SSD on fire, we're next going to literally set the SSD on fire using a heat gun. Uh, to show you that, it will defend its data even from a tempering attack that uses heat, which I think is even cooler. And as I expected, the SSD shut down after it was blasted with heat for a minute or two and while well, the temperature exceeded 80 or 90 degrees Celsius, which is set as its threshold. It shut down, locked everything, encrypted everything, and just like with the previous process, it had to be unlocked by a phone with the two-factor authenticator, and we're back up and running. Right now, we're going to do the physical attack, which basically means we're going to pull out the drive suddenly from this PC. So it does have this feature where it detects if you're pulling out the drive, it will wipe everything, which is like a pen or snap. So, we're going to turn it on, turn the feature on. Because, uh, it is a very extreme measure, but for some people, it's necessary. A lot more convenient than putting an SSD in the paper shredder. So, there we go, we're going to turn on that white data feature as you can see there. It's okay. And turn on the physical defense. Total defense. Okay. So this right here is the laptop. We've turned it off, we're gonna turn it on. I mean, we're gonna take out all the screws and we're gonna look, look at that laptop right there. While we're here, we're going to remove the SSD and then uh, it should automatically wipe the data. So suddenly shake it. It says apparently if you shake it a lot, it will detect it, it's been tempered with. So just make sure that uh, it knows it's been removed. Put it back in, all right, and then we can so it's been removed, we're going to slide it back in after the removal and uh, I'm not going to put it back on yet, I'm just going to turn it back on. So if it has worked correctly, what it's going to do is it's going to wipe all the data and uh, it will be unable to boot up properly. Oh, yeah, I think, I, think, I, th I think we can't boot it up. If you click on the drive, it's all black, so yes. It has accomplished its task. It's all wiped completely. There you go. So if you try to steal my drive physically, uh, it says screw you and blows itself up. There you go. I mean, you can still use this drive. It's just that there's no data on it anymore. So you can't steal the data. That is a lovely, lovely thing. So it works as intended. So obviously there are some risks to this, um, turning this feature on. You might forget it when you're like shifting SSDs or moving your SSD around. So make sure you turn it off if you have this SSD before you upgrade your SSD because you're just gonna wipe your SSD's entire data. I mean, most of the problems in cybersecurity come from human error and most of the problems of deleting files also come from human error as well. So there you go. So how does this work exactly? To understand how the X5 SSD works to protect you, you have to understand how a basic SSD works. And we'll try to dump it down. Basically, SSD really only has two major components. We have the memory controller and then the memory chips. The memory chips is where everything is stored, nothing much to explain there, but the memory controller is basically the brain of an SSD. It basically manages all the data that goes in and out of your SSD. And essentially, it reads all of your data and manages all of your data and then sends it out to different memory chips for storage or deletion or access, whatever. And if you realize, that is pretty scary. Your memory controller technically reads every single bit of data you send to it or read from it, which is literally all your data. So if you're someone who is thinking a little bit, you would think that that is a major point of risk for cybersecurity operations. If someone can tap into your memory controller, they can attack your data and get access to it. Weirdly enough, it's also a great point for defense. If you add another layer of defense to the memory controller, well, you're gonna be a lot more secure than if you didn't. And that's kind of the whole concept of of x SSD. Add as much security onto the hardware itself baked in so that if there's anything that tries to attack it, well, at least at the hardware level, 
you'll be protected. So how does it work exactly? Well, this is essentially an SSD on steroids. You've got the normal memory controller, but on top of that, we've got a custom SOC designed around it. We've got a custom firmware chip on here that has a AI firmware. This AI provides behavioral based protection, which basically means it has an artificial intelligence machine learning algorithm to detect user patterns and user habits. And the moment it detects something out of the blue, out of the ordinary, that doesn't make sense, that's weird and might be a risk or threat or attack, it will then shut down the drive, encrypt everything, lock it, and then protect your data. On top of this AI thing, which reads every data, learns from you, and then protects you by shutting things down if it detects something is wrong, it also has a bunch of other sensors to protect it from a physical attack. A hacker, for example, might want to disable this drive by blasting the memory controller, the SOC, with heat. If you know processors, once they get too hot, they're gonna shut down and be unable to run. In this case, well, it's got a heat sensor. So if it detects someone's blasting it with heat, well, it will shut down and encrypt everything and prevent whoever's trying to do it from accessing the drive. And I tested it, it is pretty effective as you've seen from the test just now. On top of that, it also has a shock and vibration sensor. And the point of this is if someone jerks this out of the computer, cuts off its power suddenly to try to bypass encryption, bypass the controller from being able to react, well, that's not really possible because that shock detector will then tell the SOC to quickly encrypt everything and shut it down. You might ask, how does it do it when all the power is cut? Well, it's got a little battery in there that gives it enough juice to encrypt and lock down everything before any hacker can get their hands on it, which is good. So then you might ask, this SSD, well, does it replace antivirus or is it better or is it worse or is it different? Like, how is it compared to your average antivirus? Well, for one, it is a completely different system. Most antiviruses are based on signature based cybersecurity, which essentially means that the antivirus has a library and backlog of different viruses, ransomwares that it knows of. And every time you try to run a program or any sort of program is running, it will match up that program to whatever it finds inside its library, inside its backlog. And if it matches, well, obviously it will stop that program from running because it realizes it's an attack and something problematic. But if it's not in the library and it happens to be a ransomware attack or a virus, well, then it won't be able to stop it. And this is actually a problem because if you don't update your antivirus software frequently, well, the libraries won't be updated. So if there is a new exploit that comes along and you didn't update your antivirus library, it might be able to get through because your antivirus won't be able to detect it. And then bye-bye data, which is all bad. Also, if you happen to be attacked by something called a day one exploit, that is to say some sort of homebrewed new virus or a ransomware that someone created or coded by hand or you know maybe took an existing one and modified so the antivirus couldn't detect it and basically it wasn't on antivirus libraries you will be screwed because well the antivirus won't be able to detect it because it's not in its libraries it's not in its backlog and that will be pretty problematic. Behavioral systems, as I explained just now, are different because they don't rely on libraries. They rely on machine learning and they rely on figuring out user behavior patterns to determine whether a program is anomalous in terms of how it operates. And that is more resistant to things like not updating your antivirus software, it's more resistant to human error, and well, it's more able to detect day one exploits. Well, the difference between a software-based behavioral system and a hardware-based, like this one, behavioral system is actually quite interesting. Well, both are behavioral-based systems and fundamentally, they kind of operate the same. The main reason a hardware-based one, like the one you find on the X5, is even better is simply because this is put on the SSD. It has access to literally every single bit and byte of information that is being sent through and redrawn from the SSD. Because it has access to literally all the data that comes in and goes through here, it can build a much more accurate, much more expensive profile of the user's behavior. As a result, predict anomalies more accurately. Software-based systems, well, it can only read the information that Windows or Mac or whatever OS you're using allows it to read. And as a result, it doesn't get the whole picture. It's very limited compared to, well, a literal AI that is reading every single bit and byte of data that goes through your SSD. And as a result, these software-based systems will have more false positives because to err on the side of caution, it will flag everything that's slightly anomalous as problematic because it doesn't have a big enough picture of what's going on. This, on the other hand, doesn't have as much of the, an issue with that. Now, obviously nothing is perfect and there might be still some false positives with a system like this, but it's going to be significantly better than a software-based system because it has the bigger picture of all your data. 
But on top of that, it has other advantages as well. Because this is all hardware based and it's really designed to be fire and forget, apart from the occasional firmware updates which Flexon says wouldn't be that often, with a device like this, you don't really need to do much to, well, keep this up and running. It will just be chugging along in the background. No worries about antivirus updates, no worries about managing and ensuring that all your features are on, and very low likelihood that you accidentally turn off the features on here because a lot of the features are always permanently on with the exception of say the heat sensors and the shock sensors. The antivirus encryption is pretty much perma on and every time you need to make a change into the settings of this drive through its uh, Windows-based software or Mac-based software, you will have to do two-factor authentication. So it's very, very safe and very, very secure and very, very unlikely that you accidentally screw it up by turning something off or switching up the settings and disabling your security features, which is another advantage of a SSD-based cybersecurity system like the X5 SSD right here. And finally, last but not least, I think the most exciting thing about this SSD is not only the fact that this technology works because we're, we have tested it as you can see, but also because, well, it's accessible to you and I, the average consumer. It's clearly a consumer product. The UI, the interface, the apps are very easy to understand, very easy to set up. I've tried it myself and you can literally just buy one of these. I mean, it's in pre-order for now. Slap it into your laptop, set it up as your main drive and boom, cybersecurity on your SSD. And that is awesome. I wouldn't probably have covered it if it was just limited for expensive servers and expensive corporate implementations, but for you and I, the average consumer, this is actually attainable. And not to mention the fact that, well, it's made in Singapore. So then if you're interested in upgrading the cybersecurity in your life, well, check out these Flexon X5 SSDs because they have built-in cybersecurity and they are properly impressive. But there is a fair word of warning here, it is going to be substantially more expensive than the price of an SSD without all its security features. You're paying for the R&D, you're paying for the additional hardware that they built onto the SSD, so it's fair that you have to pay the extra. But if you do the maths, it adds up to about the cost of a year of antivirus subscription, so I mean, if you care about cybersecurity, it's a small cost to pay, especially if you really, really need to protect your data. Either way though, this product is impressive. And if I wasn't so dead broke, I'll probably have bought a couple for myself for my PCs already, because I am a bit of a paranoid guy when it comes to cybersecurity, which is like why I guess this is probably a good fit of a sponsorship. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching once again. I hope that was an interesting video. This is truly an interesting product. And thank you to Flexon and Xfire SSDs for just sponsoring this video and letting me have the chance to test out this SSD, install ransomware on it, mess around with it, blast it with a heat gun. It's really, really fun to do all this stuff and uh, I'm just happy that I got this opportunity to check out something so damn cool. I'll see you guys in the next video which will be coming really soon. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon once again. Goodbye.